to go from here and see how we go. Right, so, okay. <laughs> so we seem to be working now. So uh, only about three or four minutes late. Um, so yeah, I had to improvise a bit today, guys. Um, only just discovered there's a two-year-old birthday party happening via Zoom in my home. So I've jumped in my truck. So uh, I would like to thank all of you for joining us today for our inaugural, our very, very first ever Agents Here to Help live broadcast. Um, so just very quickly, a little bit about what we're about. Um, agents Here to Help um, is a group of like-minded agents like myself from across the country um, who really want to share their knowledge and passion and insight and experience to try and help some of you guys answer some of your questions uh, and figure out some of the more challenging parts of your day. Um, this has all come together very, very quickly. We had this idea literally two weeks ago and from sort of just throwing an idea out there um, to, yeah, in two weeks, we've gone to having over 80 agents um, involved um, and we're hoping to be putting out two to three live events a day um, to try and help you guys better understand the complexities of property market as a whole. Um, content like today will be sort of aimed at sort of trying to help a specific group of people. So I'm here today to try and do my best to help tenants. Um, so a little bit of background uh, about myself. So uh, I have been and still am uh, a London tenant uh, since 1998. So I've been renting in London for 22 years. Um, don't please ask me what I've spent in rent in that time because <laughs> I think I'd probably have a heart attack before you did. Um, but yeah, so I mean, in that time, I've obviously experienced a lot. I think I've lived in about 10 different properties, something like that, eight to 10 different properties uh, in my time in London. Um, and when you consider sort of two of those, well, three of those properties make up uh, probably about 15 years. So there was about a five year patch where I bounced around pretty much every six months. Um, as well as being a London tenant, I've also been an estate and letting agent for 18 years and 16 of those have been owning and operating my own estate and lettings agency. Um, and the reason my partner Anne and I decided to set that company up was fundamentally because we didn't really like the way tenants were being treated. Um, I mean, to be fair, we didn't really feel like tenants or landlords were being treated fantastically when we started the company, but we felt that um, a letting service was very, very landlord orientated. Um, and a lot of people treated tenants like they were some sort of um, oh, sort of inconvenience um, rather than an essential part of the ecosystem. Um, and I think particularly in London, um, and, and not that rent should really have any bearing on it, but I think particularly in London where people do pay a lot of money um, for the homes that they live in, um, I do think it's right that tenants should expect a little bit more than the absolute bare minimum and there should be some sort of service that comes with that. So anyway, that's that's always been our journey. Um, now, do feel free to post any questions you might have. Um, I can see the comments coming up on the page, so I will do my best um, to answer any good questions as they come up. Um, but I'll crack on now and just really talk about, um, yeah, I mean, the current environment we, we're, we're living in, this this whole coronavirus, COVID-19, um, whatever, whatever you refer to it as, um, has, has obviously, you know, really thrown a lot of spanners in the works and a lot of the normal rules that apply um, to the lettings sort of, uh, the lettings industry and the lettings ecosystem um, have to a certain extent been thrown out the window. Um, so I thought I'd share with you, first of all, uh, what our experience has been like at base. Um, so obviously we're now sort of, well, we're obviously three weeks into the lockdown. We're sort of really four weeks into things being quite serious, five weeks 
uh, since it was really obvious this was, you know, this was this was going to become a serious event. So um, in that time, I think we've now we've probably had so we look after we have about 230 active tenancies um of that we have had somewhere in the region of 10 to 15 and i would i would ballpark it around 12 um tenancies contact us over the last four weeks um all of whom have been severely impacted by corona and and typically uh that being their income um and particularly if um particularly if uh you you were affected early doors before a lot of the protections came in i think it was particularly scary so um what we're advising at the moment is largely um you know conversation is king um i think conversation's been king generally about this i think it's probably one of the good things that has come out of this crisis so far as people do tend to be talking more um but i think uh you know patience understanding and conversation is the key at the moment to navigating the letting space um and what that uh means is that i mean very simply every set of tenants and every landlord are in a unique and individual situation um exclusive to that relationship um, and I think that's what's so tricky when I look on social media, a lot of the comments that are being said either from some landlord groups about tenants, but also from some tenant groups about landlords are quite single minded. Um, you know, I've seen some landlords be like, well, not my problem. You know, rent's still got to be paid. And equally, I've seen some tenants go, well, just stop paying the rent. What can they do? Uh, and neither of those are helpful. Um, we will come out of this. We will go into um, a more normal ecosystem at some point or another. And what you don't want to be dealing with, a massive backlog of rent and debt that is, is going to be hanging over your head and is going to be your legacy to deal with, um, whether you're a landlord or tenant. Um, I've got a question coming up here from Hannah um, about responding to a renewal. I, I'll, I'll circle around to that in a second. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Look, the, the one thing I would say is, uh, just as a, as a general piece of advice, as a tenant, 80% um, of people are now covered by some sort of government protection. Um, and and uh, backing up behind that is obviously universal credit. So as a tenant, the moment your income is impacted, or even if you're concerned it might be, it's really important that you start understanding uh, what that means to you. Um, and what support is available to you to help you try and meet your your uh, contractual requirements as you normally would. Um, once you understand that, it's just really about having a very candid and understanding chat with your landlord and understand that they might be facing very similar situations as well. Um, they might have lost their job. They might have been furloughed. Um, they might have their own business with something falling in. Um, so, yeah, it, it's just about patience and understanding and and really just talk this is a unique situation we've never had anything like this before um and the important thing is that you try and find a mutual ground and you get somewhere so that was that on a, on a sort of general point of view um hannah asked about renewals and a landlord and agent not responding so um first of all if there's an agent involved that might you know, that might just be because they are running at a very cut back sort of operation um and therefore their speed of communication might not be as fast as it normally would be um if if they weren't a great communicator before then that's probably going to get even slower um so look uh, if if your landlord agent is not coming back to you about a renewal i mean i suppose all you can do is sort of keep chasing it if you've been dealing with the agent um i mean don't don't panic if there's no notice in place um, you've got a security of tenure. At the moment, the government is requiring three months notice from a landlord or agent to terminate a lease. So if you haven't already been served notice, um, that that's the minimum notice you're going to, um, they're going to have to serve. So um, take some security in that. I think at the moment, with regards to renewing tenancies, um, I think it's a tricky space for everyone. Um, I don't think a landlord... Uh, obviously, a landlord would love to have the security um, of income for a contracted period. But at the same time, I'm sure the landlord will have reservations 
about what the next six or 12 months means to you for your job security? Um, do they want to tie you into a 12 month contract that you may not be able to, You well, we just don't know, do we? None of us know um, what the next 12 months has in store. So um, I think that that is a challenging battle and it, it, it will depend on your job and your role, uh, what sector you work in. Um, there are more, um, some affected more than others. There are some sectors that are totally unaffected. I was chatting to my neighbours the other day, works in insurance and they were like, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really matter what happens. Um, we're always busy. Um, so there are some sectors untouched. Um, but but yeah, look, if your landlord's not coming back to you um, or your agent about renewal, just sit tight. Don't get too stressed about it. Um, try some different methods of communication with your agent. If you've been leaving voicemails or sending emails, try the other. See if they've got social media. Try engaging with that. Um, again, as with everything right now, just, just be a bit patient, be a bit understanding. Um, they're probably um, not coming back to you because... They're either waiting for instructions from their landlord or they're figuring out the best way forward or, you know, with limited resources, they're dealing with the best of what they can. Um, so I've got um, one of the guys on here has said, you know, they've got quite a lot of landlords asking them um, what their response should be with regards to I'm having problems paying. Um, so... Yeah, look, it comes back to what I was saying earlier in that it really needs to be a discussion. I don't I don't think there's any golden rules about what you should be doing as a landlord right now. Um, I think as a landlord, you need to understand that for tenants, this is incredibly scary. And look, it's scary for you, too. Uh, I know a lot of landlords rely on the rent to pay their mortgage um, and that property is really a large part, if not your entire sort of pension plan. So um, there could be some very serious repercussions um, around that. Um, but uh, yeah, if your tenant's having trouble paying, uh, I think you've just, you've, there, God, there is no black and white answer to that, is the honest answer. You've just got to really, really have a conversation and talk and understand what it is your tenants can feasibly do. I mean, particularly whilst we're still in lockdown, and I think all of us are expecting that to be extended today, because uh, this is three weeks, um, but I think we're all expecting this to be extended for at least a couple more weeks, if not longer. Um, the bottom line is, under that framework, it's going to be very, very difficult to place any sort of alternative. Um, even if your tenant is willing to surrender their tenancy and move home, uh, move back home to their parents or whatever that's that's not really meant to be happening right now um so yeah look the bottom line is you just need to have a conversation understand you're gonna all have to be very frank with one another i think a lot of walls that usually come up between landlords and tenants are gonna have to come down you're gonna have to be very very candid about what your financial situation is what income you've got coming in um and realistically what what you know, outside of putting food on the table, what you can afford to pay for rent that isn't going to break you. And as a landlord, you've got to decide whether that's enough. Now, if it isn't enough, yeah, I mean, truth be told, you know, what is your choice? Three months notice, no court evictions at the moment. The bottom line is the government have put you in a situation where you've got to find a middle ground. You've got to find some sort of resolution. Um, if you can afford to freeze the rent for three months, you know, and then come up with some sort of repayment plan with an offset that it comes back off the deposit. Um, yeah, it's, it is a tricky one. Um, there are some stories of tenants withholding rent. I categorically would not advise any tenant ever in any situation to withhold rent. Um, even if you even if you feel your landlord is, is in breach of contract. Um, Withholding rent is a very extreme thing and have very bad repercussions for you. Um, withholding rent for the sake of withholding rent. Um, uh, withholding rent for the sake of withholding rent is never a good idea. I know I've seen some tenants banding together to try and form some sort of movement. Look, eventually things are going to start to return to some sort of normalcy um, and the courts will will reopen, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and look, if you treat your landlord unfairly, um, 
they absolutely should be taking you to court. You know, it, the bottom line is this has got to be a relationship. It's got to be a conversation. Um, and you've you've got you've got to do that. Um, there's some nice comments coming up here. Um, Simon, who's an agent, but also a landlord. Um, that's really lovely. He's um, he's actually decided to match the furlough pay um in with regards to rent so basically any of his tenants who've been furloughed he's done 20 percent reduction in line with their furloughed income simon that's that's awesome that's a really really good move um i've got uh ian from ferndown ian you were saying what is a reasonable repayment structure um Again, I think it depends on the amount of rent you're deferring. I think at the moment what we're going, what we've negotiated on most of our tenancies is a reduction for three months um, and that that payment is due to be paid over the next, the following 12 months. Um, but subject to review at the end of three months, we don't really know where we're going to be at the three month mark. Um, there may still be a lot of pressure on the system. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that, that's the reality of the matter is, is that's how we've done it anyway. We've done it so that the, the deferment is paid over 12 month period, um, with any unpaid balance deducted to be deducted from the deposit at the end of the tenancy when they vacate. Um, yeah, I agree in, um, the three month repayment period. I, I definitely wouldn't put a repayment on three months. Uh, I don't most tenants live on a fairly small margin from day to day lives. So having an extra third of rent to pay back over three months, I don't think is going to help someone. I do think those repayment periods um, need to definitely be longer. Um, otherwise, you're just creating an, a, a different pressure. Um, and that's even, you know, that's even if we are back where we are in three months time. Um, I think that's why we've, with all the negotiations and agreements we've done so far, there is that caveat um, that we will be reviewing it at the three month mark. Because the bottom line is all we can do is come up with a solution that works right now, that works on the situation we're dealing with now and works with the sort of framework that we that we currently understand, which is that, you know, this is hopefully not going to go on for much more than three months. Um, but we don't know yet, you know, and also uh, however long this goes on for, we don't know how long this is going to take to unpick um, and, and you know, whether we do return to relative normalcy within a month or two of that or whether this is something that, you know, leaves a lasting um, impact on incomes for the foreseeable future. So um, I think that's what we've said. We, the few of the tenants that we've negotiated with, they've come back going, oh, you know, what does that mean or a month, a, a review in three months? Well, you know, what we've said is what's been agreed is the framework of what's been agreed. And that is how, um, you know, we've had an undertaking from the tenants that that is how things will go forward. Um, but really, the three month review um, is just sort of a caveat or a safety um, for those tenants. You know, again, uh, touching on what I was saying earlier about, you know, your repayment pay schedules have got to be reasonable. Um Again, there's no point in us enforcing what we've already agreed in three months' time if things have got worse. Um, and, and God, we're all hoping it doesn't get worse. But, you know, the fact is it, it, it might get worse before it gets better. And so, yeah, we just need to try and find a way through. Um, I have seen some amazing things happening. Um, you know, I've, I've seen some amazing stories of, of landlords who, you know, without even being asked, um, have given rent-free periods um, because they're fortunate to be in a position to do so. Um, that is amazing to see. Um, as heartwarming as those stories are, don't get too excited as a tenant. Most landlords are not in a situation like that. Um, and it's worth remembering that, you know, your average landlord has one to two properties. Um, usually it'll be an accidental. Uh, there'll be an accidental landlord. One of those properties will have come around because there are a couple who've got together. Um, they are not, as tenants in the media often believe, um bajillionaires just sitting on some cash cow so um so yeah landlords face some real um issues as well um hannah what is your advice on asking your landlord or agent to use your security deposit as a substitute for rental payments um really good question hannah um so uh, i actually saw uh, a call out by eric walker uh, on twitter the other day 
um, who was formerly at uh, Northwoods in Belvoir. Um, and that was a really interesting suggestion, which was, um, you know, if you've got a good tenant, if you've got a tenant who's been with you for a while and they've generally been good at paying rent, um, maybe that is a good interim solution is to release most or even all of the deposit to the tenant um, for them to help with cash flow and paying rent um, or maybe agree to take some of their, you know, some of the reduction out of the deposit. So there's still a little bit left there. Um, just make sure you communicate, make sure you keep all your paperwork accurate um, and that you've got some something in writing that this is all very much agreed between all parties. Um, you don't want to fall foul of deposit legislation um, whilst trying to be a good guy. Um, but yeah, I mean, deposit is definitely uh, something to play with there. If you've got a cash deposit, obviously that won't be an option if you've done sort of like a, a deposit alternative solution. Um, Ian, communication is key with this process and educating landlords. Yeah, yeah, totally agree, Ian. Um, we started talking to our tenants and our landlords very, very early in this journey. We didn't wait for lockdown. We started sort of five weeks ago um, and we, we kept it very clean language. You know, it was all to our tenants about making sure they knew we were here for them. There was no judgment. There was no criticism. Uh, but what was important is the moment they felt that they were or might be impacted financially to start that conversation with us so that we could sort of educate and inform and, and, and manage their landlords on that journey. Um, and likewise for landlords, we started very early on saying, look, this is this is something, this is not just a tenant losing a job. This is not um, this is not a normal, a normal uh, impact on income. Um, and so the normal rules do not apply and you're going to need to think outside of the box. Um, so we've got Chrissy here. You said about treating the landlord unfairly. They have the right to take you to court. I agree. However, sorry, I'm just opening up your um, form as yet. However, what about if you communicate with the landlord via the agency? You seem to be doing the absolute minimum in terms of chasing doesn't leave much comfort in the weekend on landlord either. The agency is blunt, not overly informative. The decision generally lie in favour of the landlord or those who own the property. Um, okay, Chrissy, uh, quite an quite an interesting question there. Okay, so so black and white, the contract still applies. Um, I think I think that that's the really important thing that people need to understand is that at this moment in time, um, contract is king, um, and and anything agreed outside of that contract is between yourselves, the tenant and your landlord or your agent in between. Now, um, what I would say is if you're, you commented there that your, your agent was being a little bit blunt, maybe, um, and, a, and you felt the tone was harsh. Um, I would caution reading too much into an email or a letter. I think we can all agree. Uh, I despise email. Um, uh, pretty much any written word, really, because you apply whatever tone you imagine that person's used or whatever mood you're in. So don't read too much into into the language. I think agents will also be very cautious about what they're writing and how they're writing it at the moment. So some will err on the more technical and it will come across a bit cold. Um, if you find that the language with your agent is a bit blunt, uh, don't be afraid to go back and ask if there's any chance you can actually have a chat directly with your landlord. Now, in normal circumstances, I would say, look, an agent's not going to let that happen. But in these circumstances, I would recommend that most agents would. Um, if as an agent, you're not able and willing to facilitate um, a, a longer, more human conversation about it, and you're and you're just having to deal with the cold, hard facts of a situation, then maybe it's better you take yourself out of that. Um, let your landlord and your tenant have a chat directly. Um, they might actually feel more comfortable and might reveal more information to one another than they'd be willing to reveal to you. Um, as long as they come back and tell you what's been agreed, so you can help facilitate that. Um, that would, uh, yeah. That, that, so that would be my advice is, is look, ask if you can speak to your landlord, um, ask your agent if you can speak to your landlord directly. Hopefully they'll agree. Um, in a normal market, I would say they wouldn't because that's what the landlord's paying you for, but, but nothing is normal. So the normal rules go out the window. If that agent um, refuses, then I would just try sending the agent a heartfelt email and ask them if they can pass that on to the landlord. Um, 
steer away from any criticism. Be very cautious of the language you use. Um, even if you feel that you've been let down or frustrated or you're being treated coldly, try not to criticise this moment in time. Um, just just focus on your situation and what you're hoping to get out of it. And, and you know, hopefully you'll find some middle ground. I, I hope that helps. I'm um, just going to pick up the phone and wobble around a bit. Read some more of this. Alison, do you know are interested to achieve offering solutions available one for tenants? Yeah, student tenants, you said communication. Yeah, so Alison, that's great. Um, really good to see agents sharing content at the moment. Um, we've also put some of the emails we put out as blogs on our base website. Agents are welcome to copy those. Um, another one coming in. My agent has gone bust due to coronavirus. What do I do now? Um, okay, so uh, first of all, you need to establish if your agent has genuinely gone bust or whether they've just sort of gone into full lockdown mode. Um, the very first thing I would recommend you do is reach out to your landlord. Now, if you don't already have contact details for your landlord, uh, the first thing you need to do, go onto the land registry, purchase what is called the title register um, for your property, cost three quid, um, uh, and you'll get a digital copy of that. And, and that's your best shot at finding out what your landlord's contact address is. Now, the communication address for your landlord on that might be the property you're in, in which case you're a little bit stuck. Um, what I would do in that case, um, first of all, if you paid a deposit, take steps to make sure that your deposit was correctly registered if you're not yet already sure. You should have been provided with a deposit certificate, um, how to rent, prescribed information document, um, yeah, so double check. If you're not sure, there's three license schemes, My Deposits, TDS and DPS. Contact them. One of them should have your deposit. Make sure that is protected and safe. Um, also, uh, it's also worth checking if you've paid any rent to that agent, they might not have passed it on to the landlord if they have indeed shut up shop. Um, look into that, go onto that agent's website. They should by law have what's called CMP, which is Client Money Protection. Um, find out what scheme they're with, contact that scheme, make sure that they had that cover in place. Um, and then other than that, what all I would do is if you're not able to contact your landlord, sit tight. Um, keep paying your rent, but obviously don't pay it to the agent anymore. Put it into like a savings account somewhere that you're not going to spend it. Keep setting it aside because at some point that landlord's going to contact you and you're going to need to pay that backdated rent. So just keep setting it aside if you do think your agent has closed um, and just sit tight. And really, that's it. That's all you can do for now um, is just make sure the relative protections are placed. Like I said, make sure your deposit is safe. Make sure any rent you've paid to them is protected by CMP insurance. And otherwise, going forward, just set the rent aside, keep it there. At some point, your landlord will get in touch. I hope that was useful. Um, or if all the staff are furloughed, who do I contact? I mean, again, I would just, with agents at the moment, um, I don't think any one method of communication is good. If you try one method and you don't get an answer back, try another and keep trying. Most agents will have some sort of social media presence um, as well as their phone. I don't know if anyone even sends faxes anymore. No, <laughs> we don't, but you never know. Um, telephone, email, whatever. Try them all, um, but do be a little bit patient and hopefully you'll get hold of someone eventually. Chrissy, grad, that was helpful. Um, social media channels to find your landlord. Good idea, Ian. So yeah, coming back to what we were saying about how you can track down your landlord if you're not dealing with them directly... Um, like I said, title register is a good first point to start. Um, but yeah, social media, good thinking in. Get your name in there, get searching, um, reach out to some people, pray that your landlord doesn't have a name where there are 3,000 people on social media with the same name. Otherwise, you're going to be sending a lot of random messages to people. Um, but no, that's that's a great idea, Ian, um, to help do that. Um, and, and yeah, that's another good tip as well. Try your neighbours. Um, some of your neighbours might know they might have, maybe your landlord used to live there or maybe they've got to, um, maybe they've got to know your landlord over the years and they've got contact details or maybe they had problem tenants there once before. Who knows? Um, 
neighbours are always a good source of information. Um, so I think I think that's it for now. We've had some, so I'm just, just in case it's not clear what I'm doing, I'm just scrolling back through um, some of the comments on here just to make sure I haven't missed anything on there. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I mean, just going back on what Russell posted earlier about some tenants stopping rental payments because they think they're protected from short-term eviction. Um, yes, you are protected from short-term eviction, um, but the most important part of that sentence is short-term. Um, you know, if you if you choose to almost militantly stop paying your rent and be quite aggressive um, about that, um, I don't think that that should be viewed kindly by anyone. Um, this is a situation that we're all facing, um, and don't don't try and take advantage of this situation. Is what I would say. It will come back um, to bite you in the butt at the end of it. Um, and I think there's going to be a lot of that, not not just in the tenant landlord space. I think um, there's a lot of harmony and stuff right now. But I think when we come out the back end of this, there's going to be a lot of horror, horror stories of people who really try to take advantage of what is going on. Um, and I think deciding to stop paying rent just because you feel that is your right. Um, yeah, I think you'll you'll end up paying the price for that. And that that could impact... Look, any any major debt could impact your life in a in a huge way going forwards um you could find renting nigh on impossible afterwards um i know i wouldn't want to touch a tenant on our portfolio who had taken that sort of action against the landlord rather than an action of conversation um even if the outcome had been the same, you know, a tenant who contacts and says, look, I've, I've lost my job. I've got no savings. I literally cannot pay a penny of rent um, until I find some solution. Um, that That is still very, very different to a tenant just cancelling a standing order mandate and blocking your calls. Um, so, yeah, look, I, I would I would never advocate that. Likewise, on the flip side... I would not advocate a landlord or agent being heavy handed at this time. Um, there is no upside to that. You know, you don't need to scare people. You don't need to worry people. No one is choosing to be stuck um, in this absolute shitstorm. Um, you know, and we're all just trying to find a way out of it. So, um, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, let's all just let's work together and try and find an amicable way forward. Um, in the event tenancy is coming to the end, tenancy and wish to leave, uh, when they still owe rent, any tips? Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, look, we've, we've, so at base, we've got quite a few tenancies that, uh, have either, were well, either sort of in their last couple of months, we'd already given, given notice. We obviously legally have to give at least two months notice, um, to serve a section 21 on our tenancies. So we had a chunk of tenancies um, in that, um, uh, in that sort of uh, period running up to the end. And obviously in the last sort of four to six weeks, we've had other tenancies come into when we would normally serve notice. Um, what we've actually said to all of our tenants right now is we, we put an email out about a month ago saying that we are not serving any notices in this current climate. Um, we're just letting all of our tenancies transition. If, they, if they're coming to the end of the contracted term, we're letting them transition into what is called a periodic tenancy, which is what a tenancy will typically do if you don't serve notice. And what a periodic tenancy means for those tenants out there um, is that that tenancy just keeps rolling. It just keeps going on the same terms until a party gives the relevant notice. So as a tenant, it's one month. And as a landlord or agent at the moment in the climate, it's three months. Um, as a tenant, if you can give your landlord more notice, if you want to move out, you know, please do. Again, landlords and agents are facing um, a really messy um, situation at the moment. Um, uh, Murray has added a really interesting point. For landlords, make sure you know the new Section 21 claim for... So there's a new 21 
um, Section 21 form. Um, so just make sure you're using the right one. Um, there's some more information out about that. So um, Murray Lee is actually doing uh, an event on LinkedIn. And so look him up and find out about that if you want to know more about um, a Section 21 notice. Um, my landlord is worried about offering me a temporary rent reduction due to the Tenant Fee Act. He is scared that we might claim he's been charging hidden fees each month. As per implications, what would your advice here be? Um, interesting one. I, I, I don't, I don't think there's an argument for hidden charges. Um, I think, um, yeah, I think that would be a very harsh interpretation. Um, that I think if a tenant is first requesting for a reduction, I think it would be quite hard to justify that the landlord's been overcharging, um, particularly if that's sort of fair market rate. Um, so uh, if it's the landlord doing it as a kind gesture, again, look, I think that's the landlord doing a kind gesture. And I, I think you'd have to be a pretty nasty tenant to try and flip that advantage into tenant fees. Um, one thing I would uh, caution on, um, and I can hear my business partner's voice um, knocking on my head to make sure people spot this one. Um, rather than a deferment, if you are doing a rent reduction or a rent free period where that money is not going to need to be paid back, um, you are effectively altering the value of your contract and therefore um, you are potentially affecting what is uh, calculated as a five week security deposit. So um, what I would suggest in that situation, you can either do a fairly complex calculation to the new amount and, and amend that, re refund the amount and update the certificate. I'd, I'd say that would be a bit excessive or um, as part of that conversation, you just need to get the tenant to give you an undertaking that they do not expect or want any part of that deposit to be refunded. And they're happy for that to stay at the originally stated five weeks. Um, another uh, top tip from my business partner who's just come in. Um, and again, I was saying this to someone the other day. Um, records are king. Um, make sure you keep an accurate record of what's being said, what's being agreed. Uh, don't be afraid to jump on a phone. Um, WhatsApp, FaceTime. Um, again, as I alluded to earlier, I detest email as a form of communication because it's very easily misinterpreted. Um, but yeah, you know, get on the phone, have a good chat, do your FaceTime, whatever, figure out how it's going to work, but then just make sure you follow that up with a quick email. It doesn't need to be a lengthy one. As discussed, here's what we agreed. Bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, done. Um, you know, with something like, you know, if any of that is unclear or incorrect, please get back to me, you know, within an hour or something like that. But have comms so you've got that in there. Um Something else I'll touch on, actually, which no one's brought up here, but I've seen in a couple of other forums. Um, and this is less to do with the actual rent, but to do with tenancy legislation. Um, how are we doing on time? Quarter of an hour still to go. So that's good. Um, yeah, so uh, I've seen a couple of landlords and letting agents freaking uh, freaking out because they have safety checks they need to do. Gas safeties, electrical safeties, whatever it is. Um, and they have got tenants either point blank refusing for their own their own personal reasons um or they're self isolating you know and there's and there's and there's literally high risk um it actually comes back to what we were saying before about good communication look at the end of the day all you can do as a landlord or letting agent is set out to your tenant why that check is important um so so i would i would advise going about it this way i would first of all go to the applicable contractor find out are they still doing visits and if so how they are conducting themselves on those visits do they have a bit of information they can give you then contact your tenant explain why that test is so critical more often than not it's about keeping that tenant safe so you know why wouldn't they want it um put in there what the contractor has said about how they are conducting themselves during those visits. 
Um, and then, you know, see if there is a compromise. See if they can go out for their one hour's exercise whilst the contractor comes and does it. If they're self-isolating, you're just going to have to postpone it. Um, but you're going to have to get them to put it in writing. Um, the bottom line is records are king. Um, so just make sure that you're communicating why that check is essential, why it keeps that tenant safe, um, but respect what their response is. You can never force yourself into a property or send a contract into a property um, without that tenant's consent. Um, in the current climate, I would I would um, um, advise additional caution to that. Um, I know for a lot of us as letting agents, communications with tenants can be difficult. So we will quite often say to tenants, look, we've got a gas engineer book to go in on this day at this time. Um, you know, unless we hear otherwise they're going in. Um, normally, I would say that's fine as long as you're giving relevant notice and you've got that record. Um, in the current climate, I would probably say that, you know, as an agent or landlord, you're going to have to defer the other way. I think without specific verbal or written consent. And again, I would really recommend written in this regard. Um yeah, to have that on there tomorrow. But um, I'm not going to go on about that too much because Ian from Ferndale has just joined, jumped on to say he's covering the maintenance points tomorrow. So I am not going to talk about those too much more, Ian, otherwise I'm going to um, ruin your topic for tomorrow. But glad to see that we're covering all of these things. Um, so, yeah, I think, I mean, we've got, we've got about another 10 minutes on the live event, um, but there don't seem to be too many more questions coming in at the moment. Um, so I don't know if anyone's get, got any other questions that are sort of, um, scratching away at their brain at the moment. Um, just trying to think if there's anything useful. Oh, actually, so that was an interesting story I saw. Um, so if we're going to talk about deferments, deferments, I know for some tenants get them really scared. Um, and I understand that if you're a low income tenant, uh, if you're having to support other members of your family, if if making your rent and your bills on a normal month is stressful, um, then I can appreciate that this current environment is utterly, utterly terrifying because, you know, if you struggle to make each month then a deferment plan, if, it, you know, if the shit hits the fan, then a deferment plan isn't isn't going to really help you right now. But I've seen some really interesting creative sort of ideas come up. So um, I read a story about uh, a tenant who um, lost their job. Um, but the point was they lost their job. They, it, was, it was early doors before the furlough was on offered. Maybe since then they've been rehired and furloughed. Who knows? But, um, but yeah, this was about four weeks ago. Um, they'd lost their job. A rent deferment. They struggled to make ends meet as it was. So a deferment was just sort of really pushing that problem down the road and actually making it worse. Um, but what I really liked was they had, you know, they had a really open conversation with the landlord, um, you know, and what, what they worked out at the end of it was that, you know, the landlord had actually been thinking about repainting the property when they moved out. Um, hadn't repainted it in sort of five, six, seven years. Um, as and when they moved out, he was going to give it a fresh coat of paint before the next tenants moved in. So, you know, what they agreed was the landlord figured out what he would have normally paid a decorator to do that. Um, and he just gave that to the tenant as credit and the tenant agreed to redecorate the flat during the lockdown. Um, and I think that was a brilliant example about people just being really candid and honest um, and just thinking a little bit outside the box because you know what a win-win there you know the tenant hasn't ended up with any sort of debt to pay back the landlord has effectively spent money he was planning on spending anyway um but he gets his flat repainted without any void so he's not incurring that cost tenant ends up with a nice fresh flat okay they've painted it themselves but still, um, they get a nice, freshly painted flat to live in. Um, and I just thought that was really cool. I thought that was that was really good to see people really thinking about uh, thinking outside the box and, and, and coming up with a solution that 
is a different approach to it. And, you know, there's got to be other solutions to that. I mean, there are loads of really skilled tenants out there. You know, maybe the garden could do with re-landscaping. I mean, I know, sorry, excuse me. I know some of the gardens that I've seen, uh, <laughs> rental properties, definitely leave a little something to be desired. Um, they can be a little bit magnolia or a little bit weedy. Um, you know, so maybe a garden could do with an overhaul, particularly with some of the amazing weather that we've had recently. Um, you know, if you're a skilled person, maybe you're a bathroom or kitchen fitter. Great time to talk to your landlord about that really dated bathroom. Um, you know, obviously they're going to have to pay for the materials, but maybe you do your labour. Um, I was speaking to a, an agent the other day and, you know, they're not marketing their vacant properties, but what they are doing is they're having a very direct conversation with their landlords now going, look, you've effectively, you've effectively got a forced void. Um, you know, you've effectively got a forced void on you. Why not use that void and get some works done? Contractors are still going out and doing stuff. Um, so they're plowing ahead, basically getting all their properties looking the best they've ever looked. So when this gets lifted, they've got the most amazing stock to go to market. Um, and yeah, if you're, like I said, if you've, if you've got skills as a tenant, can your landlord benefit from those skills? Like I said, are you a kitchen fitter? Are you a bathroom fitter? Are you a, a carpenter who can create some bespoke cabinetry or, you know, put some new flooring in or, you know, whatever. I think there's, um, I think there's some really interesting bits that you can try there. Um, and yeah, I mean, Murray, Murray's jumped in with a couple of things about the decorating. Now, you do need to be a little bit careful with decorating and works. There obviously needs to be um, a sort of standard of works that needs to be respected. I think, you know, fundamentally you're being paid for a job. So you should, even if it's not your regular day job like decorating, you should approach it like a job. So take photos beforehand, keep all your receipts of materials you buy, make sure you take photos afterwards, you know, maybe even call your agent or your landlord and give them a nice video tour at the end so they can see how nice and bright it is. They can see that you've done the edging nicely, um, whatever it is. So, um, so yeah, I think, you know, I think, um, hoping that you're going to have a landlord who's rich enough to, to just waive a chunk of rent. I think that that's, that's lovely if you get that situation, but that's going to be very, very few and far between. So just talk, um, and think and try and come up with, um, you know, ideas outside the box, really. Um, seeing some of those, I want to live on a Inviting another tenant into a property of applicable after the crisis to share. Yeah, I mean, interesting comment from Ian there. Um, if your if your property permits and your landlord and local licensing framework, which is probably the most common reason to block this, um, obviously another option to help sort out any rent deferments might be to take in an extra tenant, an extra lodger for a short period of time to help come up with that backlog of rent and get that paid back. Um, if But but do please check that you're not breaking any laws by doing that. Um, so yeah, that is that is another way to, um, to figure out a solution um, without sort of uh, pushing debt down the road. Um, yeah, I think uh, we've We've, I'm calling them much. I've got about five minutes left, but I feel like at the moment I would just be filling those five minutes with five minutes of fluff because I've pretty much talked um, about most things at the moment. Oh, so actually, no, that's one thing I'll round up with. Um, so as tenants, look, this is a great opportunity to look at your uh, look at your cost base. Um, and what that means is look at everything you're spending money on right now. So the most obvious thing is utilities. Um, it is the most neglected thing I think tenants do. I try to recommend um, that our tenants at least once a year, but really probably even every six months, shop around and see what best deals are there. Now, a uh, little top tip um for all of you out there, and this is homeowners as well as tenants. Um, so uh, not to pick out any brand, but just because I know they have this feature on their website. If you go to uswitch.com, okay, go to uswitch, go to utilities, 
put in whatever you've got, gas, electricity, typical usage, what you've sent, brrr, up come the results that you've got there with the cheapest at the top. Now, if you look over to the left-hand side, I don't know if you're doing on a mobile, it might be different, but on a laptop or desktop, if you look over to the left-hand side, you've got sort of filters that you can tweak to change your results. And there is a option on there to tick a box, if I remember correctly, which says basically see suppliers not supported by U-Switch, not part of the U-Switch ecosystem. Um, tick that box because you will almost always come up with multiple suppliers at the top cheapest end of that bracket. Um, yes, you'll have to go direct to that supplier's website <coughs> to go and set up your account. So it's not as, as clean and easy as doing it through the U-Switch site. Um, but I know I, I live in a flat which is which is the like the world's worst insulated flat ever. It's an old Victorian live workshop. We're right on the cusp of what is legally allowed um, for energy um, uh, efficiency standards. Um, we've got an electric only property. So put those two things together and you can imagine what our electricity bills are like. Um, now, when when I did that search, um, the supplier that came up that we use called Outfox the Market, they were nearly 20% cheaper than the cheapest supplier you switch came up with. Um, so I think we saved something like about £800 a year on our current supplier and about £500 a year on their recommended supplier. Um, so there's a really good spot. You know, if you defer that much in rent, if you can save that in your bills, you've effectively recouped it anyway. But but look at your whole cost base. Go through your bank statement. Look at all those things that come out your your bank account every month um, and look at do you really need to keep paying that? Can you downgrade a package? You know, can you cancel something? Anything like that you can do to help yourself now. Look, Come out the back end and everything's la die. You can always go back and reinstate those. And um, but that's 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 my little top tip outside. So um, we're about two minutes to. I'm going to call that a day. Um, sorry about the rubbish start. Sorry we were late. <laughs> sorry it took me a little while to figure out how I actually Facebook Live. Um, Hopefully it sounded okay in my car. Um, hopefully next time I will be doing this in slightly more comfortable settings, hopefully in my own house. Um, but didn't think you guys would appreciate a screaming two-year-old birthday party going on in the background. Via Zoom, I might add. No kids coming together. Um, but yeah, uh, so thanks for joining us for Agents Here to Help. Please follow us. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, we've got a website hopefully coming out uh, possibly by the end of this week, which would be amazing. Um, we've already got a whole week of content booked this week. Uh, uh, Russell, Russell Quirk is on this afternoon, I think at two, um, talking about where the market's going. Uh, Ian, who was interacting from Ferndown Estates, is doing one um, about regulation, compliance, safety checks, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, just, just keep following, keep sharing. If this was useful, um, look out for the hashtag agents here to help. Um, we're also going to be doing sort of specific hashtags like hashtag help tenants, hashtag help landlords, uh, will help you find that stuff. Um, anything, any live events that we do, the recordings of which are going to be shared, um, on all of our channels. So you can always come back, look stuff up, share it with people if that's useful and helpful. Um, so yeah, you know, this is the start of it, but, but do, ah, oh, sorry, Russell, one o'clock. Russell is on at one o'clock, not two o'clock. Good start by me there, getting the time wrong. Didn't want to come off the screen to check any stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, Murray, any tips for us co-presenters? Um, anything I would say about presenting, just maybe have some post-it notes stuck up about either things you want to cover, like the next event on agents. <laughs> here to help so you actually get it right um but no other than that it's it's all been quite nice and free-flowing the tips come up quite nicely um but yeah thanks for your time today today guys i hope i hope some tenants watch this and i really hope this was a bit helpful for you guys um do get in touch if there's other questions you've got do reach out to us as an agency do reach out to me as an individual i'm happy to try and answer your questions directly specifically 
um, happy to obviously collate those into, you know, if we if we see recurring patterns, I'll do more content about this. Um, and, we, you know, we'll circle back. This is going to be a, an ongoing journey. Um, and just to finally say, look, we're not just here for coronavirus, guys. This is something that we really want to be here for for the foreseeable future. So um, tag our pages, like our Facebook pages, you know, stay on touch with our social media. Um, we're going to be putting out more and more stuff. Let us know what you want to hear, what you want to see, what questions you've got, what answers you need. Um, we've got some amazing agents. I think we're up to nearly 90 agents now across the country um, who are going to be sharing their time and experience and knowledge um, to try and help you guys better understand and better tackle things. So that's it for me signing off. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a lovely last Easter bank holiday weekend, uh, Monday, uh, back to work for most of us on Tuesday. Um, and yeah, that's it. Love, peace.